So maybe we can start by, uh, I want to give a few minutes before we actually pull from the muse jar and we'll have some time to, to think about what we're going to paint. But, um, tell us about the muse jar, Brittany. What, 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 why'd you make the jar? <laughs> Here's the muse jar. Okay. So when you first started painting, um, you'd call me a lot. We'd be on the phone and you'd say, what should I paint next, Brittany? I don't. I want to paint. I don't know what to paint. <laughs> like you had just started this hobby and you were really excited to do it. You know, like most people are when they start yeah. a, a new endeavor, you know, you want to practice. And, um, so the question you would ask me a lot is what should I paint Brittany? What should I paint? And so at Christmas time, you know, I was looking for watercolor related presents for you. Yeah. Um, and I found it was an art journal, a watercolor art journal, and it had, I think, 12 prompts. So it was like a monthly thing, and you would go through and do the different challenges. I'm like, well, that's cool, but... One a month. I mean, one, one a month, Michelle will go through that in a week. It won't even last her a month. And so I started thinking about it, and I started to look on Pinterest to see if there were painting challenges. And people had different lists of things. And so I kind of pulled all of the lists together and um, did a lot of Googling around for painting prompts. And some of them I came up with myself, but I decided to give you 365 different challenges to paint. And, uh, you know, one of the things when you asked me what to paint, I would joke that I was your muse. <laughs> <laughs> um, but sometimes I would come up with an idea and you'd be like, yeah, I don't I don't know. Maybe I don't want to do that one. So, um, there are rules that come with this muse jar, and yes, I, I don't know how many times I've bugged you, like calling. I don't know what to paint. I want to paint. Uh, yeah. So. For me, I have to feel like kind of connected to what I'm painting. But there's a challenge here. The muse jar is no doesn't come with no strings attached. There no, are rules. there are rules, um, and that way, all 365 prompts get used. And you get challenged as an artist. And, you know, I think you're really talented, so I think you're up to the challenge. So what are the rules, Brittany? Um, so the rules are you pull one prompt at a time. Uh, whatever the prompt is, you can't reject it. You have to paint it. And there's no peeking. And this is why I painted a dollhouse yep. yesterday. Because the other rule is... Uh, I can't move on to another no, you can't move prompt. on to a new prompt. You have to do. You have to finish the prompt you draw before you move on to another one, um, and that way you never run out of ideas. And sometimes and, I like you, and sometimes I don't. Yeah, <laughs> and you're forced out of your comfort zone a little bit, which is good for everyone, you know. And that's kind of how you grow as an artist is to do things that you're slightly uncomfortable with. And I saw we have Paul on here. Paul mentioned that. He was looking forward to putting a face to the name because you put him out of his comfort zone every week. <laughs> That's me. You can blame me. But uh, I think you're going to draw today, so that way it's your fault. It's not, <laughs> it's not my fault. I hope we don't get something really complicated. <laughs> right. I hope we I hope we get a good one. Um, and, you know, a lot of people have asked, like, what's in the Muse jar? What is in the um, Muse jar, Brittany? What's in there? All kinds of things. I don't know. Look, if you don't like the prompt, you can't get mad at me. I don't, I didn't make the muse jar. I just paint what's inside. <laughs> so if you go on Pinterest and you search painting prompts or art prompts, they, there are whole lists. And I pulled from a lot of those lists, but a lot of them um, have a lot of the same subjects. So when you're trying to come up with 365 different painting prompts, after a while you have to get a little creative. Mm -hmm. um, so like I would scroll through Facebook and see somebody talking about something and I would take note of that. Um, and some of them, so some of them are just pretty straightforward subjects, you know, Good a bird, <laughs> a species of bird or plants. A lot of them are very nature themed. Um, some of them are more challenged than they are subject, like... Dollhouse? Well, <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm sure that the dollhouse was a challenge because it's really hard to give you know, the viewer kind of the sense of scale. And a lot of people did a really good job with we that. We had one that it was like a really cute kind of like pen and uh, like a sketch with watercolor. And then there was a little dog peeking his head through. Mm -hmm. and that I was, was like, a good one. That was good. And I like the one with the mouse. I think that <laughs> might have been my favorite. And I do scroll through every time you pull a prompt. I scroll through. I look it, when people hashtag their stuff, mute, hashtag muse jar or hashtag whatever the prompt was. I scroll through all your paintings. I love to see what everybody comes up with. Um, 
I if really, you, really enjoy it. If you're wondering about what we're talking about, if you're with Watercolor for Real Beginners Facebook group, you are like following along every week. But if you're joining us right from YouTube, we have a Facebook group. Well, I do have a Facebook group called Watercolor for Real Beginners. It is a safe place for like absolute beginners. You never painted before or you've been meddling with watercolor, wherever you're at. It is a positive, safe pl place to learn, to um, share your work, get like good advice. Um, and every week I pull from the Muse jar and we all paint whatever whatever was inside. <laughs> what is that? Usually it's on Thursday. To, I've been pulling them I mean, every Thursday. Yeah. Of course, today is Sunday. Looks like we now have a comment. Who, who's that? Is that from... Oh, from Paul. Paul, Paul says absolutely true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Paul, did you paint a dollhouse? I, I haven't seen your dollhouse yet. Um, what was your, out of all the ones we pulled so far, what was your favorite? Um, I really liked Through a Window was good. Which I have Which is here. back here. here. It's hard to which, remember all of them. I think that was before I started pulling the prompts. I'll yeah. This, this was before I started pulling the prompts for the group. Um. This was through a window. I really like that one. Yeah, and that's the other thing is I created this jar for you. And so there are things in here that are silly and off the wall, things that you and I kind of joke about sometimes. Um, and and like I said, some of them are challenges. Some of them are, you know, paint with just these two colors. Um, some of them are abstract. Like maybe it's just a feeling or... Um, are, are you nervous about what we're going to pull out I'm, today? Uh, I hope we didn't get anything too complicated because, <laughs> um, you know, even if we got something simple, I'm not sure how well my painting would turn out, but and I've got, I'm I, I do have, to paint with you. I do have pics to be up just in case we need a reference photo yeah. or whatnot, but, um, uh, let's see how many people we've got on. We've got, oh, we've had 10 people viewing so far. Paul, are you ready? Brenda, are you ready? Who's ready for the big reveal? Oh, yeah. And Brittany also does a lot of crafting herself, um, a lot of crochet, a lot of like paper art. I know you've like yeah. done some quill, paper quilling for me, but she did the, the top of the jar and it says, believe in yourself. And for me, art is all about like expressing yourself, being positive, being creative. And like, this is a, a positive zone. There's no, like when you start painting, you might not like what you're doing, but you're not allowed to my rule, <laughs> since the Muse Star has rules, right. my rule is you can't critique your own art. You can't say anything bad about your own art, especially while you're painting it. Right. Well, and what you don't love, somebody else will absolutely love. You know, um, I just a couple of weekends ago, I went to the Indiana Artisan Marketplace. And if you've never been, they do it every year here in Indianapolis. And it's local artists from mostly Indiana. Sometimes they bring in people from Kentucky and Ohio. And... Uh, I love to walk around and see what everybody makes, but it's so interesting to hear people talk about the art that they see in different booths. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one person really loves this piece and the other person doesn't really like it. And so, you know, art is very subjective and, and what you love or, you know, might not be what somebody else loves and you might not like, Expressive. you might not love what you put on the page, but somebody someone else, else really might. Love. Oh my gosh, I'm nervous. <laughs> okay, so... You're going to draw, so this is your fault. I'm going to shake them up really good. Maybe we should do a countdown. I don't know. No, fingers crossed. Okay. You, you, op you open the jar. Okay. Oh, gosh. Oh, I'm not going to look. I'm scared. Oh, my gosh. I'm scared. <laughs> sometimes I like them and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I get angry at my... Brittany and I are best friends. We've been friends more than 20 years. I know. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Pick I have one. one. <laughs> Pick a good one. I'm what just going to say. Oh, this is a oh, good one. Oh, oh my good. gosh. Okay. Jim, where is Jim Logis? Because this is like his subject matter of choice. Are you ready to see what we pulled? I, I, I you read already it. saw it. Ready? Okay. It's a chickadee. Chickadee. Where's Jim Logis? <sighs> and I'm... Like, I'm a bird person. I love birds, so there's a lot of birds in this jar. A lot of different species of birds, and a lot of birds is the subject I'm for a lot of these prompts. I'm tempted to try and, like, have us recurate one of Jim's paintings, but one, I don't have his permission, and two, I don't know if I could be, I could channel Jim. Um, I'm going to start looking for reference photos of a chickadee. Um, I can share my screen while I do this. Just. Chickadees are...
If you're a bird watcher, they're, they're some of the tiniest little birds. Um, and they, they make a really nice little song. I don't really know if I spelled that right. Chickadee. Oh, there's a cute one on yeah, the branch. Yeah, little black cap chickadee. They have little buff bellies. And if anyone that's that's joining us live, if you have a reference photo you, you want to share, feel free to put a link to it in the chat. If you use Pixabay or Unsplash... <laughs> Paul um, says, animals, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a bird. Uh, I've painted a few birds. It's the littlest bird, and it's got some good contrast and some simple colors. I did. I spelled it wrong. Okay. And Let's... I have a few of oh, your bird paintings. Oh, look at that one. Which one? Oh, I like that one. And we got some drawings in here. This, I like sometimes, I think we all struggle to find like our style. And it's taken me a long time to realize what my style is. I'm ready to share my style. My style is to try to paint something somewhat realistic where the subject is like something about it makes it seem realistic, like the donuts. But then I do it in a way that's like super abstract, like the background's different or like the, the flower I have up in the top. I love the lotus flower. It's a really um, good one. So I like to use like maybe unnatural colors. But what I've learned is if I paint from a photograph, it makes me like really want to recreate the photograph. But this is a really interesting image right here where we have like the outline of the chickadee and we have a little yeah. bit of information. What do you guys think? In the, in the chat, who's, who's got some, some ideas on reference photos? We're going to maybe vote. I kind of like... This one, um, I, this one's kind of interesting. It's a whole different style. I don't know if that's... What about the one that just looks like it's stamped? For any beginner friendly. This one? Yeah. Well, it has no color. Well, but then you can choose your color. But I know, I need to know what a chickadee looks oh, like. Well, I don't, it looks like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that we got a chickadee, though, because they're one of my favorite birds. And I am turning one wall of my central fireplace into a gallery wall that is going to go ceiling to almost to the floor. Um, and I'm doing it exclusively in animals because my living room is very nature themed. And so, uh, whoever's painting turns out best today, I might keep yours <laughs> for my gallery wall, which will be about the fifth or sixth original piece I have from you hanging in my house. So, I kind of like this one, too. Do we have any I do votes? like that. And it has, like, a kind of a bluish hue on the cap, which is interesting. Yeah, the blue and the white and the yellow. Um, and the, the belly of a chickadee is really more like a buff color, but that's interesting that it... It reflects yellow. Well, here we wouldn't really have to paint much of a background. Yeah. I like it. It's cute. What do we got going on in the comments? Anybody got an opinion? Uh, Jen B says, I live in Vermont. So many chickadees in my yard. I love to watch them come to and from. Um, and Kimberly Dawn says, I have those eating from our feeder as we speak. They're oh, called, you can take your own reference photo. They're called the cherubs of the bird community. And I didn't know that. As a bird person, I'm a little surprised I didn't know that that's what they're called. Okay, so I'm going to download this. I'm using um, Pixabay. So there's a few websites I use for reference photos. Pixabay, um, another one is Unsplash, Vecteezy. These are all sites that are free and you can get royalty-free images that you can use as a reference photo and like... If you sell your art is really when it really matters, but you don't necessarily want to use an image that you don't have permission to use. So I'm going to go ahead and print out a couple copies of this. And while we wait for that, we'll start to get our, see, that's going to be kind of big. Let me see if I can rotate it. It's a little large. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. Let me print a couple of these. I think Brittany, since Brittany's, New to art. Oh, I can put two on a page. We'll Be probably... creative says so she liked the one with the sunflower, but... Oh, I didn't see the one with the sunflower. Put two of these. I like that this guy's standing on a fence post. Yeah. And he's got like a... If we want to do a background, it can be super simple, but we don't need to have one. But I think what, we're, what we'll do is transfer the image with graphite paper since, you know, okay. Brittany's here... <laughs> And I don't want to make her too nervous. Well, I mean, if, if, if I think I can't paint, I definitely can't draw. Drawing is not... Um, Ow, I oh just hit no, my knee. Oh, that's terrible. Um, let's look at our table here, see what we've got supply-wise. First, we've got our, our prompt, chickadee. 
Um, I've got some jars of water here, some clean ones. I had a little, I was giving Brittany some super simple five minute painting lesson before we started here. So we do have a, a dirty jar already. We've got some brushes. Today, we're both using Paul Rubens paper, cold press paper. I've got my Winsor Newton Cotman slash professional series paints here. I've only got a few of the professional colors. So if you've got any paints that will do, um, the color names are pretty, pretty similar. I've got water, spray bottle, tape, erasers, everything. And then I'm gonna grab some graphite paper for us. So one of the things, and we have to decide if we're gonna tape it off. Maybe, we, do, you, do you wanna do a background? I mean, I'm gonna frame it anyway, if it turns out. Good All right, let's do a background. Yours okay. anyway. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna frame yours. So we're gonna tape, so we're, we're using watercolor blocks today. So they're glued on all four sides. That helps keep your paper nice and flat, but we will tape the edge so it's nice to frame. So reference photo, let's see if it'll fit. It'll be cute, it will fit perfectly. Yeah. I've got a paper cutter, I can trim it a little bit. A lot of times, you know, I have a background graphic design, a lot of times I'll scale my image to fit my paper, but this will work just fine. I'll use a paper cutter. No, to I trim like it a that bit. kind of big, simple shapes and yeah, that would be a good project. Uh, does anyone want to paint this along with it? I'll share a link to the picture. Let me do that right now. Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hit copy here. I suppose we're going horizontal with this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can share this real quick in the in the chat we i don't know we could i think horizontal is probably the way to go we might want to trim our paper though because we got to tape it yeah tape it down um let me see i'm just going to put in the chat the link to the image that we pulled from pixie Let me just grab the hyperlink real quick. And then if you're at home and you want to follow along, you can. Okay, I'm going to grab my paper cutter. And you can use scissors if you want. This is not like, don't feel like you got to be all complex with this. I'm just going to trim these sheets for us real quick. Here, let's move the paint out of the way momentarily. We just want this to fit nicely on the sheet. Nice thing about um, watercolor paper blocks is they usually have a cover sheet like this, so you can actually use that to measure. Nice. All right. So let's go ahead and trim off a little bit from the top. Let us know in the chat, chat if you're watching or if you're also painting along. Paul says he's gonna paint tomorrow. I wanna see it, Paul. I also want to see Paul's dollhouse. And oh my gosh, if Jim Longus joins us, or I'm sure he'll see this afterward if he's not, he might be busy painting chickadees, but I feel like we could all learn a little bit from Jim since like, I think chickadees is about his, okay, so our, I don't want to I have, cut off the tail. Um, I have Jim's, uh, the crow and the fox on my, on my list of, Prince to buy for my gallery wall. <laughs> <laughs> He's so whimsical. I bought uh, one of his prints. It's a fox in a tuxedo. Yeah, I, I saw that one. It's really good. I like that he puts a story with each painting and makes it a lot of fun. I love the ones of the little girl in the woods playing the piano. Oh, yeah. And there's a balloon. I don't know. I, I swear Jim did not pay me on this stream. But I was really excited when he did choose to join the group because... Even though watercolor for real beginners, and that's like the whole thing is like, you know, we don't, it's not a place where, you know, professional artists are going to go share all their stuff and make people feel intimidated. But Jim is one of those artists that he's a group expert and we can all learn so much from him. And his style is just so loose and fun. Okay. Now we've got that. You're learning the whole process here today. Like I start know. to finish. Pick a subject. Pick a reference photo. Okay, graphite paper can be a little bit messy, so we'll talk about that. 
But our first step here before we transfer is let's go ahead and tape our paper. So we want to tape our edge so that if we do put a background on this, we're going to have a nice white edge. Oh, before we tape the picture down. So you have to really watch me, Michelle, because I am. <laughs> and you don't have to tape if you use a block, but I still, I don't know, I just like pulling the tape off. I am and having that nice clean edge. If you leave me to my own devices. <laughs> and this is, the, I mentioned the Paul Rubens paper. I feel like this is a lot less expensive than like arches. But I feel like it's yeah, don't almost waste. as good high quality. I love the arches. Don't waste your good but. paper on me. <laughs> if, you have, if, if you're nervous about using good paper, go watch my video on using good paper. Because as a new artist, if you just use the cheap paper, cheap paints, and you try it out, you might just be really frustrated and think you suck at watercolor. Mm -hmm. But it could be your supplies. I mean, I at am least give it a try. I have used cheap supplies at home, but I'm still pretty sure it's because I suck at watercolor. That's right. You did buy some watercolors, didn't I you? I did, but they were, I bought them at Tuesday morning. Um, it's like little Yeah, gift just shop. a little palette. Mm -hmm. And um, I like to watercolor with, with my kid. Um, his abstracts are better than mine. <laughs> All right. So you've got yours taped. Mm-hmm. And like I like to bend it around the corners a little bit so it doesn't move. Okay. And then you want when we're transferring the image, you don't want it to move. Um, so we're gonna tape the image down with our tape. I like to at least tape it in two places because if it does move, you're like halfway through transferring, you're gonna get super frustrated. And we're just gonna transfer like a sketch. So if you're not great at drawing or like me i can be impatient i just want to get to the painting because i love the painting part um this is a great way i'm not going to transfer all the detail i'm just going to like put enough information down so we can tell what we're painting all right so graphite paper i recommend graphite paper not carbon paper just because carbon paper is not going to erase graphite is like paper is coated with the same thing that you have in your pencil so it's going to be erasable, which is what we want. This is a really large sheet here. I'm going to give you the smaller one. So what you want to do, and be careful, it can be a little bit messy, is once you have your paper taped down, you're going to put the graphite paper, graphite side down, underneath. And then you can either just use your pencil to draw on top of it, or you can use a stylus. Sometimes I do that. Wait, but what am I doing? How do I... Graphite side oh, down. Okay. Oh, and you want you don't. Okay, so let's put a little bit of tape anywhere you press. Okay. You're gonna get it through. So. So don't smush it too good. No, and what okay. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape the top edge of your paper here so it doesn't move. And then just where the chickadee is. Okay. All right. And then again, I'm not gonna be super detailed with this. I'm just. The harder you press, the more is going to come through, but I'm just going to kind of outline the feathers, the shape of the bird, and then I'll look at like where where the colors move or change, and I'll kind of mark some of those too. So right now, just outlining the bird. Actually, I do need to switch to my painting glasses. These are not reading glasses, because I'm not that old yet. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> They're for painting. I have no comment. They're for art. I have no comment about whether or not we're old. Young at heart. All right, so kind of got the outline here, and now I'm looking at just the different colors. And so I'm just going to like mark the eye. Ooh, he's going to like have a little bit of an attitude, I think. All chickadees have an attitude. <laughs> they always look like they're... Um, glaring at you and outside outline the beak and then just where I see these colored changes like where the black is again it's super super light I'm gonna erase most of this line I just want to know where I'm gonna like blend my colors and he's got this cool kind of like section of white back here I was really realizing the other day that with the muse jar, I've painted a lot of animals and a lot of food. Yeah, well, I like animals and food, so, <laughs> you know, what can you do? 
um, a lot, like I said, a lot of them came from lists that um, I found on Pinterest. Uh, but a lot of them, especially the animals, are, you know, birds and things that I like. Not laying the bit around the thing, the little piece of wood he's standing on, and I'll outline his feet too. Bird's feet are kind of creepy. Well, they grip on things, you know. Of course, I'll add my pizzazz to this. It's not going to be a realistic looking chickadee. But it's going to be a chickadee. Okay. So, you can just lift up and check your work if you need to. I can see most of my lines have come through. I kind of missed the eye a little bit there. Just kind of retrace around that. The eye is one that, like, I feel like if you get the eye wrong, it's going to look a little wonky. The eye and the beak, because chickadees have kind of a very specific beak shape. I'm kind of a bird nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. Uh, my grandpa was a bird watcher, and then by extension, like, my dad was a bird watcher, and so... I like to watch the birds. I bought one of those clear little bird feeders that goes up in your window. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. The squirrels like it the best, which is kind of a problem. But All right, you're still tracing. I'm going to go wash my hands real quick. Okay. You're going to wash your hands when you're done. And see how you can got like graphite on here. I bet you can get that off with water, though. So the graphite paper is a little bit messy, but it's if you use a watercolor block, you can't obviously use... A light box to trace through your paper so I just have been doing it for a while but I'm gonna go wash my hands while Brittany finishes tracing <laughs> and then she will wash her hands and we'll get to painting I hope I am doing this right she said Trace kind of where the colors change, so I'm doing that. You're doing a fantastic job. Okay, well, I, <laughs> I feel very encouraged. Um, <laughs> Paul says we're funny and he's laughing at us. <laughs> if only he hang out with us when we weren't streaming Ooh, publicly. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the language is a little more colorful. Now. I'm going to go wash my hands. All right, I'm going to check on your... Check it and correct it. <laughs> no, I'm not correcting anything. I'm just making sure everything went through. You might want to make it a little darker in some places, Brittany. She'll be back. She's just washing her hands. Okay, so now I'm going to take this off. <sighs> There's my chickadee. Got a little bit of shadow happening from some of the stuff here, so I'll try. Maybe that back here, I'll zoom in on my chickadee. Okay, darker where? So, let me zoom out so I can show everyone. So when you check your work. Oh, so I didn't so, press hard enough. Yeah, I check kind of as I go. So there are like, you okay. might lose that line when we add paint. So you just might want to go over that area real quick. Okay, just kind of, I just was trying to get like a sense of the motion of the feathers. Yeah. Like the harder you press, the more uh, graphite will go through, but... We, I usually end up erasing most of my lines anyway. On the donut one I did recently, I left the lines and I ended up really liking it. Um, and I also think it's easier sometimes for, for everyone to see when I leave the lines. But what I tend to do is lighten them up a little bit with a kneaded eraser, which is basically good, like Play-Doh. Yeah. It's a Play-Doh eraser. I didn't want to press too hard because I didn't want a whole bunch of dark stuff that then I couldn't get rid of. So you're taking both these paintings home, right? I mean, matching chickadee painting? <laughs> maybe you, maybe I keep the one that's best and you get stuck with... No, they're both going to be good. <laughs> you can't talk poorly about your art. It's I'm a not, rule. I'm, 
I'm not uh, pessimistic. I'm realistic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Brittany. Brittany and I have known each other a very long time. Yeah. And uh, we used to work since together. we were in our early twenties, and we were. I guess we've known each other about twenty years. <laughs> Why is it that I, I feel like I'm not old enough to have known anyone for Why is it that I'm going to be 40 this year and you still have another year of 39? I just told people how I'm going to be 39 are. forever. I'm only 39. Okay. I'm going to be Okay, that's a little bit too. better. Yeah. So, you did a lot of detail with yours. That's yeah. That's cool. Um, Should I not have done No, it's up to you. <laughs> like, what you're comfortable with. I used to trace every single little thing and actually have a uh, good example of it. This See, is no, a, that's one of my favorites, though. I like I it, too. I love that painting. But I also feel like I was way too detailed with it. I should have probably, like, let the watercolor do some more watercolory things. But this also, it's a very small painting, but this took me, like, weeks. Yeah. <laughs> weeks, weeks, weeks. I used liquid watercolor, but I don't know. I guess I'm trying to be a... These days, I paint a little bit looser. Um, okay, I'm going to go with this. But it's, I got fingerprint smudgies all That's over That's okay. There. Look, look. Okay. You just take the eraser. Okay. Okay, hold on. Let me, people can't see what you're doing. Let's move the jar. Yeah, we don't get that jar out of Who made that jar? So see, I like, I just used the, the knee eraser. Just kind of like, bloop, Okay. Bloop. You need to know where those lines are, but you don't want to have like graphite mixing in with your paint. I just don't want fingerprint smudgies out here. I'm sure it doesn't matter. But. Well, now I have to figure out how we're going to paint this. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. Who created this news jar anyway? <laughs> it was you, Brittany. <laughs> All right, I'm trying to take the tape off so we have this nice reference photo to reference while okay. we're painting. <laughs> okay, so typically with watercolor, you want to paint light to dark. So we've got this, like, white part right here. We probably want to leave that pretty white. Okay. Um, I think the first thing we should do here is paint yellow. And then we can maybe start working on some of the feathers. Probably do the darkest parts last. Um, You're the boss. I gotta think about how I'm gonna approach this. We're live, Brittany. <laughs> I don't have. You're I can't expert. pause and re-record. <laughs> I'm just gonna copy everything you do. <laughs> okay. We'll see. So yeah, I think we're gonna start with like anything that we put dark. Like the see, this is like almost black. Mm -hmm. And even these ones that are are darker, they're still like a yellow undertone, right? So like I think we go in first with the yellow, and kind of put it everywhere down here we'll have to let that dry i have a heat heat tool so we don't have to wait for it to dry we'll like dry it really fast and then we'll see how it goes we'll move on sure now. all right i totally trust you trust trust the process trust the muse jar trust the muse jar fun. all right so i've got you got your reference photo there mm -hmm. here okay so let's take our bigger brushes and we're going to start by adding bit of clean water I like to start with clean water okay. okay so with watercolor wherever you put if you're doing like wet on wet I'm gonna put clean water down first and then I'm gonna drop paint and the reason why I'm doing that is because it's not gonna go past where I put the water it's like a barrier okay all right so if you look at the reference photo I'm gonna just wet up this whole area like the back like this whole body part and then we're gonna drop in the water or the yellow like I said, we can paint the black and stuff on top of it. But if yellow and blue mix together, what color do you get, Brittany? Green. So we don't want to paint that yellow. Okay, so just these like two sections here, or you want to do all Here, I'll show you. So I'm going to okay. take, because um, we got a little bit of yellow up his back, too. So you got this line here. Let's start by wetting up down the back. You could use a bigger brush if you wanted to, but I'm like... You can wet up the, the tail feathers. Um, we won't like paint on them, but it might like blend over a little bit, which will look cool. Um, go around the little head thing. And then I'm just gonna like basically go around here. This whole section's yellow, like this little area in the middle. Yeah. So get that all nice and wet. And we can do his belly too. Just not anywhere where we're gonna have the blue. Just water. We used the clean water, Brittany. I did. Oh, maybe your brush was dirty. It might have been dirty. I'm not good at always the best at cleaning my brushes. So I got a little bit of water where I didn't want water, so I just kind of blot it up like that. 
What's cool about watercolor is it all cleans up with water. Well, so is this going to turn my... It looks like this has blue or purple on it. Is that going to affect it when I no. drop the yellow? So you rinse in the, that jar. And then you scrap here. You'll be fine. Now, you've got quite a bit of water. So you want it to like... Say you got like a pool. Uh-huh. Um, and let's see if people can see. So Brittany's got kind of like a, a pool of water. It's a little too wet. So take your brush, dry it on your paper towel, and you can just keep moving it around or okay. like pull up a little bit. Like mine's already starting to dry. I need to put add more water, but with like at least cotton paper, it should start to absorb the water. And so you want it to be nice and evenly wet, damp, but you want to have a sheen on it, but not a puddle, if that makes sense. No puddles. Okay. I think. Because then if we drop in the paint, it's just going to, it's not going to be very controlled. I think I'm getting there. All right, good. And now get oh, the little man. front of his. I need a little paper towel. Please. Oh, here you go. Here you go. I keep these super handy. Thank you. All right. Now we need our pants. It's over here. Let's make room for the paint. Okay, so it's like a bright yellow. So we've got like a lemon yellow. I've got a cadmium, but I think this is, we'll start with like a lemon yellow and it's got, we can still like do some color variations. We'll do like drop in some color, make it really light, and then we'll do some like feathery texture. So what I'm doing here is just kind of like activating my paint and then putting some on the palette because we're going to use like a light wash and I'm going to add some water to it. I like to keep, um, oh, sorry, Brittany, hmm. piece, piece of paper here just to check the color. So I can always add a little bit more to that. So we're just going to grab this, like wet up your brush real good. Okay. Grab some of this paint and then like, and we haven't changed the brush. We're still using the same, the same brush. Of, okay. So remember, it's only going to go where you put the water. So I'm just going to like, not even being super precise with it, dropping it in. I mean, the feathers are like intertwined and stuff, you know, and I do want to put a little bit down the back since we're gonna see some of that through. And then on his little belly. Or is it a girl chickadee or a boy chickadee, Brittany? Uh, male and female pretty much look the same when it comes to chickadees, which is not true for most birds. Uh, most bring a little bit down most the birds, here. the female is um, dowdier than the male, and the male is more colorful. Because the female sits on the nest, mm -hmm. um, and you know, they nature doesn't want to draw as much attention to her. Makes sense. So the like, if you look at cardinals, for example, the male cardinal is is brightly colored, and typically what you see, um, you know, is mascots and things. Um, and the female cardinal is she's a little more buff colored, um, and she has kind of. A more muted red as an accent but I you know I don't think there's really a difference between male and female chickadees okay so I'm zooming in here I got my first wash down and then we just want to make a little bit of like feathery texture so now I'm gonna grab like more paint okay. and more paint less water and I'm just gonna since it's still wet I'm just gonna start dropping in making some like strokes that are kind feather of feather-esque okay yeah I'm like, this isn't gonna be like a photograph and so I like to play with wet and wet because what makes things look real, real, a little more realistic, even if it's not realism, is that they have dimension. And so adding a lot of variety of color helps to do that. Um, and I even think I'm going to go grab a little bit of the cadmium and mix that in some of our yellow. So we have even a darker value. And same thing, I'm just going to like drop it in a few places, kind of like moving my brush in the same way that the feathers might go, but... Not like too precise here, people. This watercolor can be fun. Are you having fun? Um, sure. I mean, I was having more fun when this turned into a TED talk about birds, but <laughs> you know, watercolor is good too. I guess it's what we're all here for, right? <laughs> all right. So, like, it's bird esque, right? Okay, so then I should be putting like a little more of this color back here too, right? Yeah, just kind of just like follow the think about motion how birds, of the feathers, feathers would go. Okay, Maybe put a little darkness under the belly. 
but yeah. Uh, now we gotta let this dry. Okay. We, like move on. To, but I have. We're gonna time warp. In real time. Ooh. Time travel. Heat tool. Um, you could use a hair dryer. Make sure it's on low because it like blow your paint around. But this heat. Again, I don't. Nobody gave paid me to say this, but I like the crafted heat tool because it's very low pressure. It's hot. It dries everything. <laughs> Paul says, and it's not very. Can loud. I paint a baby bird so I can just paint an egg? No. <laughs> okay, so um, there's one in here that um, I'm kind of excited to paint because it it will be just. I guess I shouldn't spoil any of the prompts in the Mia jar, though. I mean, don't um, spoil a prompt, but maybe you can give us like. Oh. Some um, hints? You know, it'll be kind of along those lines, Paul. Could be a nest, could be a carton of eggs, could be both. There's no telling what's in the muse jar. Brittany does have <laughs> chickens. I have six chickens and they all have old lady names. So Jen's never painted a chickadee. Oh, I love little chickadees. Ready to see Paul's egg posted in the group tomorrow. I'm, a, you know, I'm okay if Paul paints an egg. It's not the muse jar prompt and he's breaking the rules, but... It's got to be a chickadee egg. I, I'm not sure what a chickadee egg looks like. We'd have to Google it. All right, here, Brittany. Okay. Try. And I'll just kind of zoom in to show you what. Okay, so why is my paper dry. crinkly and yours isn't? It's still wet. Oh. Once it dries, it'll be flat, and then you'll be like, oh, now it's dry. So you can see here, just by got some variation, it's not like super precise but it's giving the impression that there's some feathers i don't feel like mine has the impression of feathers at all but it's a you process, have feathers right? impressing upon your bird let's see i think next we should do the blue so we can make sure that like the blue and the yellow don't touch yeah it's also important to have coffee when you're painting I have switched over to this LaCroix. LaCroix. LaCroix water that tastes like it sat next to a bushel of berries. It tastes like it wants to taste like berries, you know? So, Brittany, you've always been super crafty, whether it's crocheting or, like, I don't know, you've had a lot of interesting crafts throughout the years. And I, I never really was, like, into it. Yeah. And then, like... Basically, like, just a little sh few months into COVID, I was like, I'm going to watercolor paint. <laughs> I think a lot of people <laughs> found, found, a, <laughs> found a hobby during COVID. Now, my great-grandfather was a pretty well-known watercolor artist. I never really thought I would fall in his steps, but I'm like, I try to channel him sometimes. But were you surprised when I decided to pick up some watercolor paints? Um, No, I wasn't surprised because, you know, your grandpa's paintings always hung in your house. And um, you were always really proud of him and the and the artist that he was and so when you picked up a hobby I thought that was kind of a logical hobby to pick up you know I crochet because my grandma taught me to crochet when I was 12 I think you know I think some talents kind of just run in your family and it's kind of natural to this is not crochet this is what no that's crochet is it really yeah I crochet made this for me she brought it to me today to hang on my wall she makes lots of great handmade things yeah Weird and wonderful things. I made a crochet frog dissection that um, I put it in my booth at the flea market and it, it wasn't there but like a couple of hours. Okay, you're going to have to about. share a picture of that in the group. Oh, okay. So people can see I'll your crochet dissected frog. Um, oh. The weird and wonderful things go pretty fast. But I've always had craft ADHD. Like I, I, pick, up, <laughs> I pick up a thing. I really want to do it. I buy all the supplies to do the thing. And then... Um, I either find out I'm not good at it, or it's just, it doesn't please me as much as crocheting is really the only thing I do consistently. Absolutely. That's why I'm glad that I stuck with watercolor, because I feel like I've invested a lot of time and money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't tell my husband how much time and money. I mean, he probably knows how much time, but anyway, here's my color palette. I'm looking at my chickadee. Blue should we use, Brittany? I think he's kind of, kind of. Maybe cobalty somewhere down in here. Well, like he's not really turquoise, but maybe my intense blue. It's kind of a, a middle ground yeah. blue. 
Maybe he is like ultramarine. Yeah. He's... Kind of a cooler blue. Meaning it's and leans more toward less, red than green. Yeah. Less at this end and more at that. Now my ultramarine's gonna like uh granulate a little bit. That might be kind of cool for this. Okay. So we only got like a little bit of blue. We wanna like stick that in. And we're still gonna be able to like cover it with the black. So no 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 Okay. No worries. Alright. I trust you. Trust the process, trust sure. your news jar, trust your best friend. Well, two out of three ain't bad. Hey. <laughs> Which one is the one you don't trust? The uh, process or the muse jar? <laughs> Jen B says the chickadee eggs are pinkish polka dot. Pinkish polka dot colored. Oh. That's interesting. I have um, a little finch that has laid a, a clutch of five mint green speckled eggs in one of the hanging planters on my front porch. So I've been going in and out of the garage, so I don't disturb her. <laughs> How many chickens do you have? Maybe? I have six chickens. And they all have names. And they all have old lady names. Three of them are named after country singers. So there's uh, Patsy, Dolly, and Reba. And then um, Edith, who is named after Edith Piaf, who was a famous French singer. I don't know if anybody likes mm. Edith Piaf, but I really do. Even though I, you know, I took French in high school, but I don't speak a lick of it now. But <laughs> she's got a beautiful voice. And, um, and then Goldie and Mabel. So Tell all me. my chickens have old lady names. Okay. So I'm just looking at where the blue is. Hi. Put... So Andrea says she just got on. We are painting a chickadee. Is that that's yeah <laughs> that's what we pulled from the muse jar if you want to paint a baby chickadee uh apparently they have speckled <laughs> eggs you just paint a pink <laughs> oval and, and flick some dark paint on top of it <laughs> i feel like paul's getting off way too easy here all right i'm just putting it in the places where i see it and again i'm like gonna i'm not trying to like paint in between the feathers or anything like right. that because we're gonna paint the black on top so, but i don't want to was i supposed to water this up first no okay. i guess we'll do wet on dry oh mine's way too dark if it's too dark you just put your brush in your water and then add water to like the paint that's on your page and you'll just be able to just move it around okay like that yeah okay if you feel like you have too much you can also like swap or sorry, sop some of it up and then since we have the white here if you want to use a smaller brush you could but like kind of make like feathery texture next to the white, right? Because those are white feathers. So I'm just like wisping my brush in toward, I don't even know if that's the technical term here. Let me show. I mean. Oh my gosh. What? I just like wisp in like wisps, like I feel feathers. like my brush is too wet for wisping. Okay. Like that. Yeah. And then we got this on top of his head too. So uh, around the eye. And lot, some of it's going to be covered up. It doesn't have to be perfect. And you know what? If you look at the top of his beak, like the He's reflection on the top of, of the beak is a little bit blue, so we'll put some little there. blue streak. Okay, I'm going to sneak some of this right. blue paint. I'm talking too much. My paint's drying. i got to go like this. Did you think you would ever be painting with me? No, Especially certainly live? not. I mean, I just showed up to talk about Pro I figured I'd probably be talking about birds. There's a lot of birds in the use jar. There's so many. All right, so I just got that painted, and again, I'm just like kind of like whisk anywhere like where there's an edge. I'm just gonna like rough it up, like it looks feathery. Okay, and I'm gonna take like a really watered down part of it. I'm just gonna paint the top of that beak. When we paint the beak black, that blue will shine through on our like little. Highlight. If you want to look at the reference, there's just a little blue highlight on top of his beak. All right. Should we leave? We're going to ask the audience. Should we leave the white feathers white? Leave the white of the paper? Or should we paint it? I'm like so bad at that. I always want to paint it. But we'll let the people I decide. Think, I think the white will need a little scritching with kind of a darker color to give the yeah. illusion of feathers, but... And I'm, like, meddling too much. I need to let it dry. How are you doing, Brittany? This. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> this is. <laughs> I've gone rogue. 
<laughs> then maybe like a little bit down the back of his neck. Like I saw some blue okay. too. Every painting goes through a weird stage. What do you think? Is it, should I, I should just leave now, right? No, no, <laughs> I'm going back to, look, yeah, look. Look, they're the same. Okay, well, we're getting there. Okay. So we could, like, dry it, or you could move on to something else. Like, let's do something easy. Let's move on to the little brown thing. The, okay. The, the stump he's on. He's on a little stump for yeah. her, him or her. Fence post, I think. Brown no, is easy. No, it's a stump. It's yeah, a brown's stump. good. All right, so this will be super easy to make a dimension. The, the stump is round, okay? Mm -hmm. And so light's coming from here. We have a lighter side and a darker side. Okay. It's so going to work really well for watercolor. So what we can do is instead of wetting it up, we're going to start with a light wash of the brown. Wet it with the light wash of the brown, and then we'll drop in a darker brown on the left side. Okay. And it'll look like we spent hours painting, like, the perfect oh, wow. shadow. This brown's a little too dark for what we want, so I'm just going to, like, oh, wipe some off my palette. I didn't waste any paint. Maybe I did. Shh. It's fine. Okay. I so won't tell anyone. See, I'm going to start with some yellow ochre. <laughs> I need to spray these down. They're too dry. Make sure you're activating your paint. Spray them down good. Activate them. They're drying as we go. Okay. So I wonder if if people in the group could choose some of the things that are in the muse jar. Ooh. Or if there were things that you wished were in the muse jar, what would they be? And I just mix yellow ochre with a tiny bit of burnt umber. This is like kind of a concentrated color, but when we water it down, I think it'll work out really well. Because so. you know, when you called me the other day, you were like, are you working on Muse Jar version 2.0 yet? And I'm like, you know, 365 prompts divided by 52 weeks is like seven and a little over seven years worth of painting. <laughs> are you worried I might finish? Um, yeah, I am. I'm a little worried you might go through these kind okay. of fast. So we have thick, thick paint here. It's not a lot of paint. It's thick. So we're going to pick up a little bit of it. Okay. And then you're going to... Dab, dab in your jar, wipe it on the side, and then fill this in. It should lighten up the brown. And if you feel it's too dark, we're starting on the dark side, so that's cool. What I can do is halfway across, dip, dip in my water again. That'll lighten up my color. And I just keep going, and it'll be lighter on the right hand side. You feel like I started out a little too light. Starting out light is, is good. So with watercolor, you can always go darker. You can't always go lighter. Like so I should know. steal another little dab of this. No, 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 no. no. Cause okay, we're going to like well, make did, one side lighter. So. Like, I don't think this is light. Yours is perfect. Okay. I got to lighten some of mine up. Hold on. Where's my, where's, okay. I hid them from you. <sighs> my paper towels. All right. I'm going to blot a little <laughs> bit of that. Just to make it darker. But while this is still wet, go back in with your dark and on the left side, start on the left side and start painting over a little bit. You can dry off your brush and then just move it over. It'll like start to make like. A gradient, like the left side is darker than the right, right? If you need to blot, you can. But it makes it look kind of like three dimensional. A chickadee's got a little thing to stand on. Yeah. And while this is still wet, we could probably get some cool effects with a small brush. Um, I have a number three. Do you have a small brush over there? I have a number four. Well, that does that work for you? I'm gonna get you a smaller brush. How about oh, this one? Wow. How about? Well, that's a really small brush. Here. Here's a zero. Okay. So we're gonna get it wet. I'm gonna tip of your brush. While this is still damp, we can grab some of this darker paint. Just get like mostly paint on your brush. Okay. And then just to get some texture, we can start um, painting it down. Just like just doing like little strokes, and then. As you get to the right, you'll want to like take some of it off. And like, I literally just plopped it on there. I'm gonna like do a little bit of this. But since that's wet, it'll like blend out a little bit and start to look a little bit more like wood. Yeah. Ta da! <laughs> Good job. What are we gonna paint next? What part of our chickadee? Can we paint oh, next? Thank you, Paul. I, I appreciate that. He says we're doing brilliant. He couldn't paint live <laughs> like we are. Um, I didn't think I'd be painting live until I, you know, 
until a couple of days after I agreed to come hang out on YouTube Live. Well, it was... It was kind of psyching myself up, but... It kind of snowballed. I was like, oh, I have this idea, Brittany. <laughs> what if... What if we do a YouTube Live? Let's let this try for a second. As soon as, soon as said, you said I have an idea, I no, should no, have no, 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 no. So I called Brittany. I said, Brittany, I have an idea. We could do a live and I can interview you about the Muse Jar. Oh, yeah. And I'm like... Oh my gosh, and then we could pull one live. Like, how cool would that be? Like, live, like, everybody can anticipate it. And then she agreed to that. And then as we were talking, I was like, how cool would it be if we painted it side by side? Or she, no, I think you asked me to paint it live. And I was like, oh yeah, I'll totally do that. And I yeah, was like, you said you should pull one and paint it live, not thinking that I would ever be roped into any of this. <laughs> so, well, you'll be with me. Right. It's watercolor for. Real I was here beginners. To provide the color commentary. No, no, no. Real beginners. You are like a real beginner, like the perfect example I of. Really am. Look, look at your chickadee. It's only halfway done, but you're painting a chickadee. It doesn't look like a chickadee. <laughs> it doesn't look like a chickadee. And then she said, "Well, the camera is just going to be top down, right?" And I was like, "Well, we're painting. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be fine." So yeah, you can you can paint live, Paul, especially if your best friend ropes you into it <laughs> and gives you no other choice. I don't know where Paul lives. I'm gonna have to use close to mm. Indiana. I could rope him into it. We can we can. Can't you like join yeah. with other people remotely? We I was I was thinking the other day in the group um, to do like as a live like we can do like live video and stuff inside the group, not on YouTube. And we could do like a live paint party where we don't necessarily have to paint, all paint the same thing, but we're just like all hanging out together painting Like a together. Zoom. Yeah, yeah like, like a, a Zoom. Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. Except not a boring meeting for work. <laughs> it's, you know, something fun. And then you can only, you can only like join if you're in the group. So. Yeah. Yeah. Paul, That'd would you fun. paint live with us if we did a Zoom? I would join and paint too. You would? With, with my cheap... Tuesday morning. I've been waiting for Be Creative, Miss Brenda Campbell, to post her first painting. I haven't seen that yet. I have. Let's see. I got the chicken paintings from you for No, 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 no. To paint her first painting. Oh. Well, but I have your two chicken paintings, and I have the bird on a spool. The chickens with attitude. Mm -hmm. The bird on the spool was a Let's Make Art tutorial. Yeah, but that was like one of your first paintings. I can't claim that one. It was a tutorial. But it was really fun. Um, it's a sewing bird, like a little. I oh, counted it was a blue bird? the other day, though. I have like five of your paintings. I painted you a pair of bluebirds. Yeah, I have the bluebirds. I framed them. They hang in my. I painted you now. two chickens with attitude. Mm -hmm. They're in the kitchen with the peaches. The peaches are framed. In I gave you the, the peaches. Maker. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, I have bird on a spool, and he's like a, he's he's kind of looks like an eastern bluebird. All right, so I think we're going to move to the back feathers next. Okay. I want to do the the, the um, black last because it's going to be like super dynamic. So these are like brownish. I think we could just like have a little bit of fun with it. So like let's find a t like a taupey color. When I need a taupey color, you can mix like yellow ochre. Like I had here just mixed yellow ochre with burnt sienna. I also have a Daniel Smith color called sand. It's actually... um. Charles Evans, I think, created the color because he paints beachy stuff. Is it? Might be, I think it's Daniel Smith. Let me see if I can find it. Yes, this. <laughs> Daniel Paul. Smith Sand. Paul is up way late. It's 8 o'clock in the UK. Oh, Paul. It's 8 p.m. in the UK. Need to have some tea. Okay. So we're going to start by wetting up our feathers. With clean-ish water. My water's not clean anymore. Brittany, you did a great job keeping your water clean. I never do that. <laughs> I'm going to rinse off my brush and my water, and I'm going to grab some of your clean water. Okay. I'll and I'm just going to, like, wet up our little back tail feathers. Okay. Shake your tail feather. Our blue paint's pretty much dry now. So, And I'm just, like, looking at the reference photo. And I also have my lines here. You kind of can see where the, like, the brown ends and the purple, or the purple. <laughs> Be cool to paint a purple bird. Where the yellow starts. All right, so I'm just gonna wet up the back of it. And I like doing this, like, some people like hate ble blooms or bleeds or whatever you wanna call them, but I think they're pretty like watercolor-esque and kinda like to let the watercolor do its thing. I think it gives a little bit of depth 
to things too. Um, I know it's kind of a totally different medium, but you know, like I was watching Bob Ross paint the other day and so much of what he did was give you the illusion that there's a lot of stuff yes. there, you know? That's what I like most about watercolor. I'm like, how am I going to paint this in watercolor? You have to approach it differently than almost any other painting. Okay, did you pick up paint and not tell me what we're Okay, we were talking. <laughs> okay, I don't want to interrupt you, but I also need I'm to sorry. like explain what we're doing. Okay, so I wetted it up. Now I've like watered down that brown that we made. And I'm just going to like, looking at the lightest parts, just start like... And then we'll just like a base coat on like these tail feathers. Because they got like darker parts. Feathers got like lines, but... Just wetting everything up. You can even just like follow the shape you had, but since we made it wet already, it'll like blend a little bit. You'll get this nice like the little bloom that's happening uh, where the wet is touching the yellow is actually gonna make it look kind of feathery. So wetting that, then we're gonna like oh, I'm just winging it here. I'm going okay. for some burnt sienna. Um, I wetted my brush and then I went right into my paint. It's, um, made my so clean it's like, water dirty. oh shoot, I'm sorry. <laughs> so you see, like, <laughs> sorry, Brittany. I'll never forgive you. I'm just gonna, looking at the darker parts of where these feathers are, and then again, just kind of like making some feathery strokes, making it darker. I've learned to like attempt to be more one with the watercolor and not like let all the imperfections bother me like it's become what I like about it and then the tail feather she's want to create some like texture long strokes I'm using the tip of my brush just to, like and you could let this dry and go back in but what I like to do when I'm doing wet on wet is like put some paint down and then wait a little bit till it gets kind of damp and I'll put some more down and then as it dries um, if we want to get a little bit more feathery action happening where the like, oh, you got more feathery action happening. Your mind is kind of like a straight line. So I'm going to like dry off my brush a little bit and I'm just going to like rough it up. Okay. Just rough it up. It's starting to look like a chickpea a little bit. All right. Now I'm going to darken up the color. So... Again, if you mix the color with water, it's gonna get lighter. Think of water as like also your white paint. So I'm trying to get like a more concentrated version of this since our paper's starting to dry. If we get right from here and don't add a lot of water, the paint's gonna stay where you put it a little bit better. See? So now I'm going in with even darker. Jim Logis, if you he teaches us how to paint a chickadee. He just like drops in color and lets it bleed and doesn't do any of the, I don't know. I don't even want to know, I want to like comment on how he paints the chickadees, but they're pretty gorgeous. They look, they, what I like about his stuff is it looks super like simple, but it may or may not be. I don't know. <laughs> he makes it look easy. We'll say that. All right. Like, I am kind of like losing this other wing here. All right. He's getting, he or she is getting very cute. How you doing, Brittany? I'm just doing what I feel. And <laughs> <laughs> it's going to work or it's not going to work. I don't know what you think about that. How am I doing? It's good. It looks like feathers. <laughs> it looks just like feathers. Keep feathering. <laughs> it's perfect okay. okay i'm not gonna touch it anymore <laughs> we still got some of our brown we can like paint some of our little guy's feet or girl's feet um actually i'm realizing that i forgot to paint the top of my stump you can always paint oh. the top of your stump i'm gonna grab some of that brown and paint the top of your stump uh i'm just gonna put a little whitewash on these feet i didn't do it it wasn't me uh, I don't know if my feet are going to be super detailed. I kind of lost my line a little bit. He's got like a big little like back claw sticking out behind him. <laughs> it's 
stump crisis aversion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so like I just painted like his little feet the same color as this, and it's like not blending very well. So I can just take my little paper towel. I'm just making the illusion that there's feet there, Brittany. No, oh, the illusion of feet. <laughs> illusion. Okay, of feet. yeah, that's. <laughs> I can totally do that. This is the illusion of a chickadee. With feet. The chickadee has feet. Sure he does. <laughs> okay. We're getting close. All right. I think we need to... <laughs> okay, I feel like this is never going to be a chicken. <laughs> if I'm being totally honest. All right. We're going to do something, something super fancy. We're going to put a little glare in our eye with, with masking fluid. Okay. It's going to be... You see, we just sure. put a little dot in his eye, right? You so know, this is, just... I've got my ruling pen here. This is your TED Talk, so... It's a TED you know, Talk? Whatever. <laughs> I don't think I meet the criteria for the TED Talk. I mean, I showed up to lecture about birds, <laughs> but... While I'm here. Right, well. so like the little glint in the eye kind of makes it look realistic, right? So yeah. this is kind of like a pin. Okay, I'm just going to like... Kind of try to put like two little dots there. Little I kind of... Here. I traced that. Well, then Part. put that where it's going to stay white. And we got to let this dry. The what? The masking fluid. Good, good, good. But you don't want to use a heat tool on masking fluid because it, like, will make it harder to remove. Mm -hmm. Well, that got all gunky. All right, I got paper towels. All right. So. Well, as far as I can tell, nobody has given me suggestions for the Muse jar. No? You know, if you guessed something that was in there, I I might subtly hint that it is. What but. should we put in the muse jar? What do we think's in the muse jar? Yeah, take your best guess. All right, I'm going to take my smaller brush now, and um, let's do another wash on the feet. So I'm just kind of mixing in this whatever. One? Yeah, that'll work. I'm darkening up that color. I had, like, some other muddy colors here, so now we're getting, like, more of a dark... Um, Dark mud. Yeah. Dark muddy brown. And then we're just going to like... Did you wet your brush first before you put it in here? I think so. <laughs> I'm just going to... Just pick up the paint on the brush. I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to paint the backside of his like little feet legs. And it's going to... like Just painting like the backside of everything making it look like there's a little bit of a shadow. <coughs> Pardon me. Allergies here in Indiana. Little feet legs, huh? <laughs> well, like, just like, it's round, right? So I mean, the, dark, I, the back side of his little feet. I totally be agree, though. Birds have feet legs. Most people, <laughs> <laughs> most people don't understand that, but I do. Oh gosh, I'm not a bird. Okay, expert. so but if I'm painting the back of his feet legs, okay, where the claw is, his little claw. That yeah, comes paint out, the, So you painted the underside of that. Yes, the underside. Okay. Just to give like, hey, look, we have. Feet legs. Feet legs. <laughs> <coughs> and then this darker color, I think we can also take back to our feathers. Add in a little bit more. That's kind of watered down here. Let me mix this a dark, more thick color. So I'm going to take... <coughs> Pardon me. Burnt sienna. When you make blacks, you really aren't supposed to make, take black from the palette but um just make things easy for Brittany. I'm gonna add a little bit of neutral I mean, tint. Whatever, whatever is easy <laughs> for Brittany. I totally you know remember. there are people there's always rules if you go into like some of the groups or like really elite artists they'll be like oh you can't use white and watercolor you can't use yeah, black watch, from the palette. I'm like you know me. what art is art and it's whatever you want. I'm doing it, to it be. right now. <laughs> All right, so now this is that little bit darker color. You can use the tip of your brush to add some okay. more. You got like little dark feathers, like right yeah, here. Yeah, like he's got one like wing. right about here-ish. Trying to make it look um, here -ish. more like a bird. And then you can even like bring some of that into, like make some of those wispies into the yellow. So again, it looks like their feathers touching each other. But it's under, like, these two bottom feathers. Mm -hmm. still pretty light. I'm going to leave those ones alone. Do you think we should do a background? 
I mean, we did tape it already. I mean, I already did the chickadee. I've done, <laughs> I've done the hardest part. Like, how how hard could the background how hard be? Could the background be? That's true. We gotta wait for our like little little eye to dry. What we could do at this point, um, so we have a little bit of purplish water here. If we take the tiniest amount, of, oh, we gotta rinse off the brush completely. Take the tiniest amount of blue, rinse off your brush. You can kind of like just cover that. Well, it still end up pretty clear to me, but the little area under here that's white, like just cover it with some water. And then you can take like the tiniest amount of water down blue and just kind of drop that in a few places. And it will create a little bit of shadow and make it appear more like just drop, drop, drop. And it'll look a little bit more like it's white feathers instead of just leaving it completely white. I don't like what that did at all. We're well, gonna do this. Do that thing. See? There. See how easy it is? Look at me, I'm an expert watercolor. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'll be teaching the next tutorial. All right. No, I won't. She'll make me do it. I shouldn't have said that. We need to... Oh, Paul says a landscape. He likes to paint landscapes. He wants to there landscape are tonight. several landscape prompts in the Muse jar. Specifically? Um, some of them are more general and some of them are um, specific landscapes. And I already clued Michelle in on this. I'm not going to say what it is, but there is one prompt that when you draw it, I have the reference art. I will provide the reference art. And those are all mostly landscapes. All right. How should we mix our black? Hmm. A blue and a red together make a pretty good black. I can't remember if it's, um, I think it's a cool blue, a warm red. See, I need to grab my my sketchbook and mix my own blacks. I also have indigo, which is really pretty. Um, we're gonna go with some Payne's gray. Shh! Don't tell the elite artists that I I'm calling all use of them Payne's gray I know straight them all from personally. here. All right, I'm gonna mix it a little bit with the blue. See how I made like it's lovely. It's a good dark black. color, and it should be kind of bluish. Yeah. Okay. But I think the best way to do this would be to do like the wet on wet. We can use like this blue water now. Um, okay. But just kind of start putting this dirty water where our black's going to be. Okay. The dirty water. And then remember it's feathers. So like you might want to like anywhere it's touching the yellow, just kind of like make some of those wispies. It's like feather wispies. Ooh, it's really dark. Uh, I'm trying to make it mostly water. I forgot. I'm the one teaching and I forget. Oh, and so remember our blue was, was like poking in out here. So you can like totally cover up the blue in the bottom and it'll we'll drop in the darkness in a different area. So you'll be able to see it. Little chickadee. Okay, mine just came out water. And <laughs> Put a little paint on your brush and then dip it. Paint. And then dip. I'll fill in your little spot and then while it's still wet I'm gonna like start at the bottom and just drop in some of this darker color I'm just gonna let it, let it move around and so when I say dropping in I'm like loading up my brush and since this is wet I'm just touching it touch 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 and doesn't it kind of look like feathers and then when I get closer to where that blue was showing through I'm just gonna like not touch as much and I will do like some of my little wispies, just when I have like kind of a rough edge. Hey, it's a bird. Yeah? Let's go, Brittany. I'm trying. You're doing a great job. I feel like my... Okay, good. Now grab this. Okay. And go to the bottom. Uh -huh. And just start touching. Keep going. Touch, 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 touch. Like, move it all right. Yeah, you're gonna get some cool textures. Oh, well, everybody likes cool textures, I guess. <laughs> Which is, you know, a fun little chickadee. I'm just touching it here and there. You'll get like a little bit of variation in between all the little 
And then we gotta do the same thing to the back of the neck and around the head. And we're leaving a lot more blue on top of this head. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. It comes around like behind these white feathers. And then I'm just gonna kind of leave them a lot of the blue and try to, he's got like an interesting hairdo. A little bit of featheriness. If you don't like your featheriness, you can always snap some of it up. But I'm gonna go back with the dark and start dropping it in there. We're gonna get to the beak soon. He's got a lot of attitude in the beak. It's a little chickety. I feel like our blue needs to be a lot darker. We'll darken it up. It's like pretty dark. So I'm like just kind of placing some feathery, textury things with my dark bluish black. And then while this is still wet, we can get some more of that blue. So I think the key here will be to get some really concentrated blue. See this, Brittany? I'm mixing up the blue mm -hmm. right here. Okay. And this is still wet. I'm just going to start painting the blue parts again while the black part is still wet. And then they're going to like mix together and be cool. Yeah? Sure. Because you know, watercolor dries lighter than when you put it down. It's getting pretty light from where we put it down the first time. It's looking then like chickadee esque. I feel like I'm just like stifling paint all over the page and not worry. You gotta do behind his ear like a little ear. Oh right here. yeah. Her or him. You don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody really knows if it's a boy or a girl. I feel like we need to give it a name now. Oh I missed. Okay, so it's going kind of around the eye with the dark. And then it I guess you can like paint the beak too. I just missed that. I'm paint right around the eye. If you can leave like a little bitty, like a little bitty white space around the eye, mm -hmm. that might be helpful when we go to paint it later. So that we still see it. I'm just gonna paint the beak. It's a little chickadee. So you're gonna come paint with me again, Bernie? Mm. <laughs> kind of a long drive. Then I'm gonna go for some more paints great, just so we have like a darker color for the beak so it stands out. Paint the bottom part of the beak. And then I want to make sure I leave a little bit of that blue left at the top. Remember we had the little blue? Look at our chickadees! Mine's a little blobby. That's okay. It has character. Yeah, okay. <laughs> is, that, is that what we're calling it? <laughs> it has character. I wonder if our... Alright. So our, our little thing is dry. But we need to paint around it to dry too before we like paint our black eyeball because then it'll I think I've just blend. like smudged it all up. So you might try some thicker paint. Okay. So see how mine's a little bit darker? Mm -hmm. So I went straight from the palette. So straight from the palette. Um your bottom part is still not really very wet anymore. But if you start at the bottom, I'm just gonna start painting up with that. Use like the, yep, and you can grab a little bit of water. 
and go back in, move that paint around. So you need like another layer to make it a little bit darker. I'm definitely keeping your chickadee paint. <laughs> cool. Are you gonna hang it on your wall with all your animals? Well, yeah. We were kind of at a standstill till this dries. I'm like nervous about putting the, we only have a tiny little bit of masking fluid. I'm gonna use the heat tool. It'll be fine. Sure. So I think it'd be cool if we did a little bit of the background. I don't want my eyeball to bleed into the rest of the bird. Well, I like what's happening with yours. You've got some cool textures happening. Misty Hills. Paul says he has painting, trouble painting Misty Hills with his landscapes. Well, we could paint a misty, foggy. I mean, I can. I might be a you little bit better at that me? than painting a chickadee. <laughs> hey, I don't. I didn't create the muse jar. I just paint oh, what's inside. No, you have to. I mean, the muse jar is totally to blame, and not the. You're the one that gave the rules. That created it. All right, here, dry <laughs> yours. Then we're gonna do our little eyeball, and then we're gonna do a cool background. We've been on. We've been live for almost an hour and a half. Mm. I like your little chickadee. It makes me happy. I feel like the shape is a little off. Impressionistic, Brittany. Sure. Let's go with that. All right. I think you're pretty good. Okay. okay. So now let's do the eyeball. We want like a really dark black. Remember we got the... Mm -hmm. Little part masked out, so we're just gonna paint the whole thing black. I have a lamp black. Don't tell on me. I'm not telling it's going nobody nothing. Straight to the lamp black, and smidge. I'm gonna try to paint that eyeball. And then it'll look a little funny until we take off the masking fluid, and then it'll like come to life. Okay, I believe you. Okay. In our reference photo, we got like this green background. I kind of like it. Can do something like that. Sure. Okay. So we have a wash brush. And with a wash brush, depending on how you hold it, and you can get like in pretty close to your subject. Um, I struggle with backgrounds because I like want to get it perfectly around there. So what I learned is if you paint clean water up to the edge and then you get your paint close to it then you let it flow there and you don't have to worry about your edges as much. Plus we'll do like a light background. So let's see, I'll grab for us, I have um, Hooker's Green Light. We'll use that color. And then it's got a couple, like actually I think there's even a little bit of blue in there. Like we can drop in different colors and grab some sap green. Trying to get this on the palette for us. I think we'll drop in some blues. But what we can do first is with this green water, since I just dirtied up your clean right. water. Right, and then we have no clean water. We can start to wet up the background and just get close to your subject with the wet water you want. Or the wet water. <laughs> All water's wet, I think. Um, I mean, it's water. But this we want to, like, saturate the paper. So... Lots of water. Just kind of go right around your subject. And then the goal here is that it's evenly wet. If you have a bigger background, it's a little bit harder to do, but we could always like start on one half and then work our way around. Just right up to that little chickadee. How many other birds are in there, Brittany? Lots. I like birds. Are we going to be painting like a bird 
diary? Like I mean, a diary possibly. Of Paul um, when you're a super famous watercolor artist, <coughs> um, people will refer to it as your bird period. Oh. Mm-hmm. I'm not like that into birds, but I feel like I've painted a lot of birds because I painted them for you. I think birds are cool. I don't know why. Maybe because I think it would be really hard to make it through life without, you know, with just tiny feet and no arms. <laughs> like, Alibones. how do you, yeah, like, how do you, uh, they have, have no hands. Like, what, how? I just think they're neat. I think it's neat watching them make a nest. There's so many different species and. All right, so I kind of wetted. Everything but like what's already down here because oh, like well I did that because it it, it you can dry supervising it's me. okay it's okay it can dry while we're doing but the only reason why I do that is like it's gonna be hard to keep this big area nice and like wet so make sure it's all still wet okay. and then you just go in and grab some of this green color pop that in somewhere grab the other green color put that in next to it okay just plop it in there okay sure. don't put it right I mean get close to your subject but not right on it. This is still wet. Everything's going to still move. And then we can grab even more water. I don't think I got mine wet enough. Well, after you put put it down, just grab more water. And then try to, like, move the pigment around. Get to, like... Um, and it should, like, kind of float up to your subject. Uh, and then we can, like, tilt the paper if we need to. But by getting it wet first, you kind of, like... Keep it from having a nice, like a hard edge right up next to your subject. And sometimes it's nice to have like your subject blend a little bit into the background if that happens. So, you know, once I have it down, I'm just grabbing a little bit more water and moving it around. Okay. Letting those colors mix together. I also kind of like when you paint around the subject that way you get kind of like a little glow around it. It almost makes it like stand off the page a little bit. Okay. And then I got to still do the bottom part of mine. And I liked what I did with the, um, with the donut. I like, again, it's hard to paint from a, photograph sometimes if you don't want your painting to be super realistic so I like put a photo filter on it yeah and it, it like forced me to like think less natural right if you need a smaller brush for some of this you can I'll grab a smaller brush now going around the little up. feet my beak needed to be darker Now as things dry, you might like want to go back and darken up some things, or but things dry a lot lighter than you expect them to initially. Oh my God, I just got one. Like you finished before me, Brittany. <laughs> I'm not finished. I'm just done. <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference. <laughs> not finished. Just done. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm just now I'm getting a little bit of water on my brush, so I can get around these little little feet. And look at our chickadees. Don't look at mine. <laughs> you can't talk negatively about your chickadee. I think it's gorgeous. Look at it. All right, we're going to dry it. Okay. We're going to dry it again. And then we're going to take off our tape. Then we got to sign them. Mm. Can I put my name on yours? No. I love your chickadee. It's cute. Mm, he's a, a hunchback. Look at him. He's a hunchback. This is your, like... This is like officially your first watercolor painting ever. Do you want to see my first watercolor painting? Because that's way better than mine. And I'm proud of you, Brittany. Who on the, on the live is proud of Brittany? Her first watercolor painting. <laughs> side by side with, with her best friend. I know she had fun. Paul doesn't have a printer. He's going to draw it. Hmm. But no, yeah. seriously, this is your first one. Like You are living proof that watercolor is for real beginners. Yeah? Okay. That's kind of what I was trying it's to It's not here. bad. Like, it it's didn't, cute. It didn't turn out nearly as bad as I thought it was going to turn out. So I got that going for I me. I mean, we didn't even know an hour and a half ago what, what we were, we were going to paint. 
I'm still taking yours home. You can have it. <laughs> if I am ever, ever a famous artist, which probably won't ever happen, but if it does, you're going to have a lot of my paintings. I'm going to auction off my entire collection hey. for millions of dollars. <laughs> Except the I chickens, have, I'll keep the chickens. Although I get really like attached to my paintings sometimes, and so I'm like, maybe I could scan it in and sell a print, but... I feel that way when I crochet. Like, I've been making those handbags lately, and I want to carry all of them. <laughs> and I have to tell myself, like, <laughs> no, I can you only have, have one it. purse. Um, I think, honestly, the coolest thing that you ever crocheted was the doll for my daughter. Oh, yeah. I like the way the dolls turn out, but the process of making the dolls is a little rough. And I get about halfway through it, and I just, I just want it to be over. You can see, I'm like making sure this is completely dry before we pull off the tape, and I'm just like feeling it to make sure, and like also like once it's flat, you can kind of tell. Yeah. So you go ahead and dry yours. Okay. While you dry, I'm gonna start to remove my tape. We're almost done. I love peeling off the tape. Look, look how satisfying it is. Paul says we have to do this more often. I think he's having... I I don't know if he's learning anything, but I think he's being entertained. <laughs> he's having a good time. Can I just... Paul, can I just show up and be the entertainment, or do I also have to <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can come crochet. You can teach oh. me how to crochet, Brittany. You know, I tried to teach my mom how to crochet, and that did not go well. Well, if we do I, it live, it has to work out. I don't know if that's because... I'm not a very good teacher, or she is unteachable. <laughs> she insists she was like, maybe I'm just unteachable. And I'm like, maybe I am just not Whatever a very good teacher. Life. Look at the little chickadee. I love him. All right. Um, and then we were painting on a block, so we got to remove our paper from the block, too. I have... Okay, I think mine is dry-ish. Yeah, you're good. And actually, you know what? I think hmm. you might be using a little bit smoother paper. That might be a hot press paper. You didn't even. So now I can peel off my tape? Yeah, peel off your tape. While you're doing that, I'm going to take mine off the block. What are you going to do with this painting of mine? You, you just said that you were taking both of them. You told me no, you had you dibs on to, both paintings. You have to, I have dibs on yours. Then I'll hang you it have on my to wall keep mine. behind me. <laughs> okay, okay so there is a spot, like up here, if you open... Sit it up. There's a spot right there where oh. it's not glued. Yeah. You put the put the knife in, and then you just kind of like pull it around. Yeah. Remove the sheet from the block. I'm gonna get a really cool tool for us to sign our paintings with. I love glass tip pens. Do you like my glass tip pens? I almost bought you a glass tip pen for Christmas. Um, I use them with watercolor. I'm especially like good with liquid water colors, but if we want to be quick about this right now, we can sign it with blue ink. All okay. right, okay. whatever. Let me move the paints out of the way. All right, so this is just dip pen. Have you ever used a dip pen? It's like a little glass thing. You just yeah, dip I it, and it works like you. yeah, it this, works like a pen. Like this, it amazes me that it works like a pen. Here you go. Okay. All right, so you got to sign it with your name or your initials, whatever. I'm opening up the ink. Careful, this is ink. It'll stain burning. No. So you just dip it. You can practice on your little sheet of paper if you need. But... Ta-da! Then you just rinse it off. I love my dip pens. They're for calligraphy. I've tried so hard to learn calligraphy. It's too hard. It's, um, I think it takes, I mean, I have... A little bit of patience. <laughs> I have trouble signing my name the same way. Every time. <laughs> Every time. I'm like, I don't I'll think be calligraphy honest. is for me. I, I might have bought a stamp. A signature stamp. Mm. Right. There's nothing wrong that here, that. Little guy. You're a very busy person. You don't have time to just be signing things. <laughs> when we sign the papers for our mortgage, you know, it's like a gigantic stack of papers when, yeah. when you close on a house. And I, when I sat down at the table, I was like, I'm going to sign each and every one of these with my full name, no scribbles. And I did until the very last page. Okay, okay we're ready to show it off. Here we go. Oh, it's really bright. I don't think they can see it. Here, let's show them off on the table. Okay. Look at our paintings, everyone. Didn't Brittany do a good job? 
Oh, thank you, Paul. He said I did a good job and I have a fantastic teacher. Aw. I think you did great. I love your chickadee. I'm putting it on my wall. Okay, good. Good luck framing it because this is a very <laughs> odd size of paper. Brittany does not like that the paintings are on like European size paper and then all the frames they sell here are not the right size and you I, have to get it custom framed. I don't. I just, um, I buy a mat and I, you know, part of the painting gets cropped out when I mat it. But, you know, if you could start cropping your paper to, like, <laughs> a decent eight and a half by 11 or 11 by 14 before you tape it off and paint, that'd be great. Well, I'm very proud of you. Oh, well, and thank you. I'm really ex happy that I got to spend this time with you. Yeah. Painting. I enjoyed it. It was fun. Um, oh, I and didn't... you got to know the We didn't you take the Paul. masking off the eye. Oh, no! Brittany! Look, our our birds aren't even haven't even come to life yet. Okay, it's dry. Remove your masking fluid. Look. Oh well, yeah, that just now totally, it's a chickadee. That changes the whole vibe. <laughs> <laughs> now it's a masterpiece. Look at, look at now it's looking at you. Mm, I love it. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you, Brittany. Yeah. Thank you, everyone who joined us live. Thanks a lot. It uh, was fun. We're gonna be. This is this is the Muse Jar prompt of the week. I'm gonna post it in the group, and so we're looking forward to seeing everybody's chickadees. Jim Loggis, we want to see some chickadees. Maybe you could teach us all how to paint one. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you. Happy painting and see you on the next live.